occasionally frozen river between two opposing castles. This is the border between the European Union and Russian Federation within the town of Neva, Estonia. It's a place that has seen much violence and which could spike more conflict in the future. Welcome to another Border Towns video where we'll examine Neva, Europe's Russian city. Location far east in the Baltic nation of Estonia, Neva is home to 55,000 people and is the third largest settlement in the country, or about the same size as Waterford City in Ireland. The city is located on the River Neva, which drains Lake Pipsy into the Gulf of Finland. Across the river from Neva is the Russian town of Ivangorod with a population of 10,000. Though the border divides the town, 87.7% of Neva's population are ethnically Russian, while 95.7% are native Russian speakers. So why is the town divided, and why is there mostly Russians living here? To figure out Neva's present, first let's look to the past. The city developed at a favourable location on the river Neva and the crossing of trade routes. The castle was founded by the Danish in the 13th century, while the opposite Ivangorod fortress was built by Ivan III of Moscow in 1492. Neva was captured by the Russians in 1558 and was conquered by Sweden in 1581. The Swedish built the old town of Neva as well as many bastions and other defensive structures. The town was the setting for the Great Battle of Neva in 1700 where Swedish forces outnumbered Forsha I, defeated Russia. Russia regained control of Neva four years later. Under Russia, Neva developed as an industrial town with one of the largest cotton mills in the world. 41% of Estonia's industrial workers worked in Neva compared to only 33% in Tallinn. In 1870, Estonia's first completed railway connected Tallinn to St. Petersburg via Neva. A referendum held the year before it decided that the town would be part of the then autonomous Republic of Estonia. The Estonian War of Independence started in Neva and the town was captured by Russia for much of it. Neva was severely damaged in the Second World War and the Baroque Old Town was completely destroyed. Around this time, the Soviets annexed Estonia. To this day, there is a device in Neva how to view the Red Army as the heroes against the Germans or invaders. After the war, the original inhabitants were forbidden to return and Russian-speaking workers from other parts of the USSR were brought in. In 1945, Ivangorod joined the Leningrad Oblast and became an official town in 1954. Estonia regained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991 and Neva was a border city once again. Neva was very different now, with many more Russians, some who supported a breakaway Russian Transnovovan SSR. A referendum was held in 1993, but it wasn't recognised by either the Estonian or Russian governments. Estonian became the official language in Neva in street signs and official business. The language is also necessary for Estonian citizenship. This blocked many who only speak Russian from getting Estonian passports. Many of these people have Russian passports or grey alien passports as stateless citizens of Estonia. These people may have lived in Estonia for their entire life but aren't fully citizens. 46.7% of Neva's inhabitants are Estonian citizens, 36.3% are citizens of the Russian Federation, while 15.3% of the population have undefined citizenship. From looking at various sources, it seems that an overwhelming majority of Russians in Neva don't wish to join the Russian Federation, though many still feel a connection to Mother Russia. They enjoy the benefits of living in the European Union, in two years, only 37 ethnic Russians moved from Estonia to Russia. The few who do want to join Russia are mostly elderly who would have lived more of their lives in the USSR than Estonia. One of the cities Neva is twinned with is Donetsk, the capital of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic in eastern Ukraine. Many hope that Neva will not end up like the Donbass or be annexed like Crimea. Estonia is a member state of NATO who fears the Neva scenario of Russia annexing the area. Article 5 of NATO states that an attack against one country is an attack against all. This was only invoked once after the September 11th attacks in the United States. 
many worry that the other states might soon come to Estonia's aid under Russian aggression. Military exercises sometimes occur around Naiva, such as the Utrea assault, an annual trek in the freezing winter. There is a large divide between Naiva and Ivangrad. While Naiva has the lowest incomes in Estonia, they are still almost double than those across the border. Ivangrad is a rundown town with no shopping centre or cinema, while these are found in Estonian Naiva. Ivangrodians also go to Naiva to buy goods from the European Union, such as cheese, that are blocked in Russia. Those who live on the Estonian side cross the Friendship Bridge less often, perhaps to buy cheaper fuel or to visit relatives. There have also been border disputes in the area. Estonia's constitution recognises the borders from the 1920 Treaty of Taishu as legal. Meanwhile, Russia recognises Estonia as a successor to the Estonian SSR and it recognises the 1945 border. A new border treaty was signed in 2014, but it must still be ratified by the parliament of both countries. To end the video on some lighter notes, the municipality of Naiva has two exclaves in the northwest of the town. Also, while being the largest town in the Ida Viru County, the smaller Jovi is actually the capital. Sub sites on the Naiva side of the city include the Herman Castle, the Rock Town Hall, Monument to Chess Player Paul Terrace, the Naiva Bastions, and the Naiva Worship Hall, which is one of the most powerful in Europe. Ivan Garage has its fortress, the Ivan Garage Museum, and the Trinity Church. While Naiva has an airfield, the nearest major passenger airports are located in Tallinn and St. Petersburg. Naiva is a fascinating place with a very interesting story to tell. Hopefully this story will continue peacefully. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any ideas for future videos or thoughts on this topic, put them in the comment section below, but please just don't stay at war. Subscribe for more on Ireland, Europe and the world.